Hello friends and welcome to this uh, series of tutorials about uh, JavaScript and uh, Jitter. So as an example project we are going to build a particle system in the um, nature of code uh, processing style. Actually I took the whole uh, algorithm uh, from the nature of code book by Daniel Schiffman which is a great source of inspiration algorithms and uh, way of thinking, let's say. So I just uh, adapted the code uh, to fit into a JavaScript file and to fit into the Jitter environment. What we are not going to do is to explain the basics. So for example, I'm not going to say what is a variable, uh, what is a function or a for loop. There is uh, plenty of tutorials that already explain that. So, yes, we are not going to cover the basics. Before we start, uh, I want to give you a general introduction to the language. JavaScript is uh, an high-level language, so it, uh, it means that it hides from us uh, a lot of the low-level things uh, that the computer has to do. For example, with uh, C or C++, we can access uh, directly the memory of the computer, while with JavaScript this is not directly possible. Then it is an untyped language, which means that uh, we don't have to specify the type of our variables. They are automatically assigned uh, a type from the program. Then it is uh, an interpreted language, which means that it's not compiled and the structures uh, are executed directly at runtime. And then it is object-oriented uh, programming language, which means that it works with uh, objects. And we are going to see really soon what an object is in JavaScript. So let's jump into action. Here you can see the, win the editor window of this uh, editor program called the Sublime. I will use this to edit uh, the JavaScript file since it has uh, syntax highlighting and uh, complexion of the words you're writing, so it's quite handy. So the first thing we need to start is to create our JS object, which is the container for our JS JavaScript file. And um, now I just want to show you how to create an object in JavaScript and uh, yes, how to what's what's an object in JavaScript because this is going to be useful when we are going to work with the cheat objects in JavaScript. So let's create uh, our file. For example, object point uh, example JS, and the, obviously it doesn't find the file because it doesn't exist yet. So let's type uh, the auto watch attribute into the file. So anytime we save the file here in Sublime, it's going to be compiled also here in Max. So let's save this file. Yes. Okay, so now we can work in Sublime. Let's open the, the file we just created. Yeah, here it is. So um, let's create an object. There are a lot of different ways, or at least it appears to me so, in JavaScript to create an object. So I will show you a couple of ways. We create a variable and uh, give it a name with a capital letter because this is a, an object prototype. And uh, the syntax is like that. So, for example, uh, I want to give these objects some properties because object in JavaScript, uh, they have properties and methods. Properties are like uh, characteristics of the objects and the methods are like uh, what the objects can do. They are actually functions um, built into the object. So let's give these objects some properties. For example, the location, which is an array. Array of three floating 
point numbers. In this case, they're actually integers. So if you write them like that, they are now floating point. Then we put a column. And for example, I want to give this also a color property. So for example, white. This is the GL style of uh, giving a color. Okay. Now, for example, let's create a function called bang. So this function will be called uh, anytime we we send the bang to this uh, JavaScript object. And let's say post the particle prototype color um, um, property. Okay, so let's try. Yeah, this is our color. So now, if I want to add another property to this um, particle object, I can do also that. Just simply call, uh, just simply create a property with this dot uh, syntax and give it a value. And now our particle prototype has also the size um, property. You see, it's extremely easy and uh, efficient. Now, um, let's see another way of creating an object. And this is uh, creating an object with uh, a constructor. So I just create a function. And this name here is the name of the object. And they give it uh, some properties. And to do this, I use the the this keyword. The this keyword uh, refers to the actual instance of this object. So let's see. For example, this side. So I'm now creating the side property. It's equal to side. This side here, the argument. Then this point area, for example, it's equal to side per side. And uh, yes, this is our object constructor. But oh, I put con. This is our object constructor for the square object. So uh, if we want now to add the property to the square object, we can't simply use the dot syntax, but we have to, to, to use the prototype keyword. For example, I want to add the color. So now the prototype of our object has the color property to, for example, let's see, square point color. Oh no, this is actually undefined because we still didn't create an object. This is just uh, a constructor for the object. We still have to create a new instance of the object. So to create a new instance with a constructor method, we can use the new keyword. For example, we give it uh, an argument. And now it should work now. It's still undefined. Yes, because I have to call the um, instance, not the actual constructor object. Yeah, and now it gives me the color. And this way it's giving me the side and the area. Oh, sorry, it didn't say. Okay. So, um, this way, when we use the new keyword, uh, we have to use a constructor for our object. We cannot create an object prototype like that. We have to create a constructor. If we want to create an instance of an object prototype with, um, without a constructor, we can use the object point create method. This method allows us to create uh, an object without using the constructor. So for example, particle point uh, location. So 
so yeah okay so these are two ways of creating objects in JavaScript and we are soon going to see why it's useful for us to know what an object in JavaScript is so let's start uh, to actually work with some jitter object and some visualization all made inside JavaScript so as always we need to create our uh, we need to create our JS object and give it a name like JS uh, jitter JS maybe okay so let's type auto watch into this save the file and open it with uh, sublime so js find jitter underscore jitter yeah. okay so uh, let's create uh, an OpenGL context so first of all let's create uh, a window and uh, we are going to use in this case the new keyboard uh, because uh, the cheater object here has a constructor which takes uh, two arguments so the name of the object we want to create and the name of the contest let's call this GS so for every almost every object in Jitter, we have a parallel in JavaScript, and we can create this object by calling the Jitter object constructor. So let's give now our, change the properties of our window. So for example, let's make it floating. So we are going to change the, pro the value of the floating property from zero to one. Let's also change uh, the size of the window. In this case, this is an array. When there are more than one value for one property, they are most likely to be arrays. And then let's also activate the anti-aliasing for this window. Okay, perfect. So now we need a uh, render. So my render, let's create it also with a new keyword cheat.gl.render and let's give it the same context name then let's uh, create a background color so let's make this white with a bit of um, transparency and uh, yes, let's now create a shape that we're going to visualize. For example, let's create a simple grid shape. Git point gl point grid shape. So let's change, uh, for example, the shape of this. And in this case, is it a string? And let's also scale this with uh, an array, 0.2 for example. So we are not going to see just big shape embodying our word screen. Let's create a function called, for example, draw. And uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's draw this uh, shape by calling the arrays method for the render object and also the draw swap method for the object so the draw swap method is a method that uh, basically draws uh, uh, all the uh, content on our window and then swap the buffer uh, the video buffer to an empty buffer to start drawing in that buffer and then swapping it back okay so that should now work Let's see, is, this is our window, it's just appeared. Let's create a message to call the draw function. And yeah, yeah, the, con the background was a bit great because the transparency. And uh, yes, for example, let's give it some more uh, properties to this object. For example, let's enable the light 
and uh, let's for example rotate x, y, z at this object with an array for example 30, 40, 120, let's see yeah, so here is our cube we can also make it uh, dynamic by doing something like that we can do something like that um, we can use the math random uh, the random method of the math object uh, in JavaScript and uh, yeah so we, this will give us a random number from 0 to to 0 point uh, nine I think and uh, yeah so every time we click the draw it will just going to rotate the object randomly so if we attack uh, like a um, Q meter to this uh, we are going to see it animated yeah, it's not really smooth, but just to prove you this concept. So I think uh, this could be everything for the first tutorial. On the next one, we are going to to work uh, with our particle system. And uh, thank you for following. See you soon. Ciao.